In this tutorial, we're going to look at reflexes. Uh, first aim is, can you describe what a reflex action is? Then can you explain how the reflex arc brings about a response to a specific stimulus? And finally, can you plan an experiment that investigates stimuli? I thought I'd start off today's tutorial with a picture of a mongoose. A mongoose has some of the fastest reflexes in the animal kingdom. So much so that mongoose can actually hunt and kill black mamba, which are the fastest snakes in the world. If a mongoose could be a boxer, they'd be the best boxer in the world, purely because they can really see everything coming. They have such an incredible evasive reflex. So if you wanted to see spider sense in animal form, look no further than our friend the mongoose. So what are reflexes? A reflex is an automatic or involuntary response to a specific stimulus. In other words, it doesn't involve any conscious thought. So right now, if I asked you a question, what's your favorite food? It would take you a little bit of time to think about it before you respond. None of that with reflexes. It does not involve the conscious part of the brain. But it does involve the central nervous system, specifically the spinal cord and the unconscious part of the brain only, the part which doesn't deal with thought. Well, reflexes exist to increase an organism's chance of survival, but how? Here are a few examples. I'm sure you're very aware that someone shines a light in your face, it's very uncomfortable, but what you might not be as aware of is the pupil constriction reflex. So here you can see the pupil is dilated, it's wide, and when light gets shone on it, instantly it will become very constricted and small, and that's to prevent retina damage. And having good eyes helps your survival. Touching a hot object, such as an open flame or something a little bit more subtle like a hot dinner plate, uh, will bring about the muscle contraction reflex. So you can see here, we've got someone putting a hand over an open flame, the muscle then contracts, and very quickly you move away without even being able to think about it. And of course, avoiding damage in this way also aids your survival. And finally, the very famous knee-jerk reflex, something which doctors will test regularly if they are trying to perform a diagnosis of some kind. So if you can remember that a reflex is an automatic response to a specific stimulus, be it bright light or a hot flame or someone hitting you just below your kneecap, then you will be able to describe what a reflex action is. And that is aim one. So now we're gonna look at the reflex arc. The reflex arc is how electrical impulses travel from receptor to effector. If you remember from the nervous system tutorial, receptors are cells that detect environmental stimuli, such as change in light or sound, and an effector is the part of body that can respond to these stimuli, like a muscle or a gland. Every response to a specific stimulus involves this pathway, which makes up the reflex arc. So you must remember this for every single reflex situation you describe. You start off with a receptor. Electrical impulses then travel down the sensory neuron. You then reach the central nervous system, the brain and the spinal cord, where all your relay neurons are. Then electrical impulses transmitted through the motor neuron, where it finally reaches the effector, which can either be a muscle or a gland. A muscle will contract and a gland will squirt or secrete something out, either a hormone or an enzyme. So I'm just going to show you some quick video footage of my pet dog Bonnie responding to a specific stimulus. In this case it's me waving a um, cuddly toy in front of her face. So I hope you can tell that biting action was occurring very quickly. It did not involve conscious thought. In other words, it was a reflex action coordinated by her reflex arc. So let's look a bit more closely at that specific mechanism. Okay, so in this demo, I was basically waving a cuddly toy and Bonnie was showing her reflex action of trying to bite it as I was waving it. So the stimulus in this case was a moving object. What that really means is changes in light intensity which are detected by Bonnie's eye. The eye contains light detecting cells called photoreceptors or light receptors and they will generate an electrical impulse. The impulse will then travel along the sensory neuron to the central nervous system, in this case the brain or the unconscious part of the brain. So from a receptor, along to sensory to the central nervous system where we have our relay neurons. 
Once in the central nervous system, relay neurons will transmit the electrical impulse to the motor neuron. So a relay neuron in the central nervous system transmits the impulse to the motor neuron. So now we're at this stage on our diagram. The motor neuron then sends the electrical impulse along to the jaw muscle, which is the effector. So now we're here at the effector. And finally, the jaw muscle contracts to bring about the biting response. So muscle contracts and the jaw moves. And that is how we get from receptor to effector using the reflex arc. And that's how you can explain how the reflex arc brings about a response to a specific stimulus. And that is aim two. Now we'll look at a very simple practical that's designed to help you investigate how sensitive we are to specific stimuli. Firstly, you will need two students. One needs to be blindfolded or have their eyes covered or shut. Next, you will need to use something like a hairpin or a paper clip and measure the distance between the two points, so over here, and ensure they're fixed distance apart. Let's say we're starting off with three millimeters apart. Now you need to choose two or three areas of the body that will vary in sensitivity. Good one for this would be the elbow and the fingertips two parts of the body which vary greatly in how sensitive they are. Next, on one area, gently press the prongs and ask your partner to tell you how many points they can detect. So you would take the three millimeter hairpin and you would put it on this other student's elbow and you'd ask them how many points do they detect. The elbow has a relatively low sensitivity to pressure, so it's very likely the student would say one point. Next, you'd remove that and you'd replace it with a different hairpin which now has its two points four millimeters apart and you'd repeat the process. And you keep on going until the student says two. And now at five millimeters, the student can actually recognize that they're being touched by two points. So you'd record that result down. Now you'd repeat the experiment on different parts of the body. So just remember, you increase the distance of the points and repeat. You record the distance where the person could detect two points. Then you repeat with other parts of the body. And what you should find is the most sensitive parts will allow the two points to be detected at shorter distances. So for example, if I was to repeat this experiment now with the fingertip, I guarantee that you would probably be able to detect two points when the prongs are only three millimeters apart. Your fingers are far more sensitive than your elbows. And that is how you can plan an experiment that investigates stimuli.